That looks a bit better. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, budget 2021. And I do have to give a little bit of credit to Mazars as I went to their budget talk last week. And I've been also studying uh, Maitland and Associates information. So I have pulled from a couple of sources to to present this to you as we all do, wanting to find out the, the detail in it. Um, okay, so just a quick little bit about me. Um, I'm a CA and um, registered auditor um, with 25 years experience in Cape Town. I work nationally and internationally. Um, PwC trained, we've been, RECRO's been around for 11 and a half years. We currently have 12 staff who are growing, which is fantastic, especially in this environment. Um, and we work with sole proprietors to medium-sized businesses. And I love working with small businesses, supporting them and helping them, them thrive and get a little bit more out um, from their accounting and numbers besides just, just the numbers. Um, if we look at this budget, I think the, the thing that classifies it, uh, sorry, there we are. Um, the Titi Mbaweni um, quoted uh, our um, Honorable Desmond Tutu, and what he said is that hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. And I think that was you know, kind of the theme of this budget. And I think also most of us are just kind of clinging on to hope that things are gonna shift and things aren't gonna be better. But they certainly are, if you look around in terms of what's happening out there, changes. Um, the fact that the top six, the ANC are not going to tea with Zuma is a good change. The fact that the, um, you know, Uber board has been dissolved and the lady uh, resigned shows a change in just the ethics and stuff that we're expecting to see in the country. Um, so there's those kind of things going through. The fact that certain departments in this budget were told to do zero-based budgeting instead of just last year plus 10%. There's little changes like that, um, extra revenue collections from SARS that are giving us those little glimmers of hope um, then I think most of the public are really, you know, really, really been wanting to see for a while. So budget of hope is what some people are calling it. And um, we certainly hope that does transpire. So I'm going to go through a little bit of background to the budget in terms of a little bit of economic um, background, because I always find it interesting and it puts it into context as to where we are and, and why the budget is what it is. Okay, obviously there's there's political influence um, and and that coming through, but the basis and the pillars in terms of what this budget is being built on are, are looking good for us. So the immediate priority, and we've seen that as well with the last lot of COVID restrictions and stuff, is economic growth. Um, they're running out of money um, and it certainly has come through, as, you'll, as I'll speak later, that they know they can't get anything more from us taxpayers. So the one thing is return to economic growth. How can they, how can they look at that? How can they get people to, to spend? Um, the biggest thing that's, that is quite concerning is that our budget uh, deficit, which means that we're spending more than we're bringing in. Um, before the 2010, uh, soccer World Cup in the years of Trevor Manuel, when we had a GDP of almost 10% growth a year, um, we had no deficit. We were in a budget surplus. It was great. Everyone was doing well. And then suddenly 2010 came. There was, we all know the story about all of overspending. Um, since then, we've been in a budget deficit okay so it's which has been exacerbated by you know all the corruption and everything everything going on um and it's also i think the, the corruption and the money that's wasted is highlighted so much more when there's a deficit because i can tell you now 
South Africa is not the only country where people steal and there's corruption going on. It's just highlighted more because there is less money here. Um, so the, the, the worrying thing about the debt that the government, because obviously if it's, you know, we're spending more than we are earning, we're having to borrow. So we're borrowing more and more and more. And the debt, um, the debt percentage of GDP, and GDP is a gross domestic product. So it's how much your country is growing. It's how they measure countries in the world. It's not inflation. Inflation is, a, you know, how much things, how things are getting more expensive. Uh, GDP is how much your country is growing. So when you've got a healthy GDP, um, you know, five to five, you know, three to five percent, that's a good sign. Um, it's to, uh, people often confuse that with inflation. So the problem is when you've got too much debt, um, you have to spend more money actually servicing that debt. And that's a problem because then if we're just paying interest with the money that we're collecting on taxes, a large portion of it, we are not spending it on the programs that we need to spend it on. Okay, so interestingly enough this year, um, the tax revenue estimates were higher than they were budgeted in the midterm budget in um, October. Um, and I think this has also helped, there was 40, there's about 40 billion that was proposed in more, um, in terms of more taxes to, to get from people and they've kind of not quite scrap, but they've put aside quite of those. There was no mention in this budget of the national health care um, plan. And almost every budget for the last at least five, six years has mentioned this national health care plan. And it's almost like, not that they've shelved it, but maybe they've seen that um, we can't be spending money on that right now when we've got bigger issues, which is also quite a good sign. Um, and I'm sure our financial advisors and, and that will be happy that, you know, we can still medical aid and that is all on the cards. Um, the, the spending in terms of the current budget is just over 2 trillion rand. Um, and the main spending there is going to learning and, uh, learning and culture. So that's your education, your health and your social development. Um, that's about half the budget is spent on pretty much social development. Um, you'll see there our debt service costs are almost 270 billion. 13% of our budget is just spent on paying interest to other people who think we're good enough to invest in. That's a lot of money. Um, Then, okay, so that's, I'm just not. Okay, so our estimated um, reductions are on non-interest expenditure are 4%, or 0.4% in terms of spending. So the pillars that are in the current budget, um, just gonna touch on these quickly. There's a focus spending, education, health, and social development. You'll see obviously half the budget there. We've got a lot of people on welfare which um, and grants, which comes under there. Um, they're focusing on modernizing the network industries, restructuring state-owned enterprises, making them run more efficiency. Um, you'll see SARS has started off um, by spending quite a lot of money in the um, AI and IT technology development. And they're starting to roll that out into other government departments too, which is a good thing. It um, will hopefully make them more efficient. Um, and then opening trade with uh, the rest of the continent, um, lowering the cost of doing business, talks to the salaries, um, public sector salaries. I know that's still an ongoing debate and um, struggle, but that is certainly the focus in, in this budget too. Has to, cost, has to start costing them less to run the country. And luckily they are starting to wake up to that fact. All the right people are waking, waking up. Um, this is just the projected GDP growth. You see 2020, we've got negative 7.2, but they're still expecting 2021 to have a 3.3 growth. Just in terms of historically, um, they always expect it to be at least one or 2% more than it actually is. So I think that is a little bit on the too hopeful side, but you never know. Um, okay, so that's just in terms of 
the last year. Households spent 6% less. Um, there was less, 18.18% less in capital formation. And why this is important, capital formation talks to investment in the country. Um, when people are spending money on capital, machinery, um, you know, things that, you know, investment in new businesses and growth and development and all of that, when people are spending money on those things, it helps all the things that are good for the economy, creating jobs, it helps um, spending increase, which increases the money in the, in the network in the economy. Um, Capital formation is really, really a good, good thing to, if your capital formation is, um, spending is good, it's a good sign for the, for the country. Obviously, there was a lot of restrictions last year because of COVID, so, um, and, you know, now also getting stuff, uh, you know, there's lots of delays in terms of imports and um, getting the right things for construction. So there is obviously a knock-on coming on um, all over the world, there are knock-ons in terms of imports and that, so that has delayed that, but, they're hoping still to reduce that, um, have it a lot less than, than uh, it won't decrease as much as it did in the, in the 2020 year. Okay, so that's just an idea there. So I've already mentioned two trillion and where it's being spent and the focus for the medium term budget. So how they do a budget is you've got a current year, which is your current, sorry, obviously the next year that's going, and then they do a, a budget for the next five years, and then they do a budget for the next 10 years. So there's a medium-term framework and a long-term framework. Um, and they certainly are looking at economic development, community development, and improving general public services, which is, I mean, it's the right thing. It's the thing that they should be focusing on. Um, and there's the majority of funding for, this is a good thing. So this is talking to the, a little bit more zero-based budgeting going on in government, a little bit more asking about, do you really need to be spending this expenditure? Are these posts really necessary? We would really know that our public um, services are way over um, staffed um, in, in certain areas. And they've, they've managed to reallocate and re reprioritize in the budget. So therefore not looking for more money, but rather spending money better. It's all those great things that we want to be hearing from, from our, um, from our uh, Treasury team. This is just highlighting what I said earlier, the debt to GDP ratio. Um, it's getting a little bit, uh, it was, it was anticipated to be higher than it was, but um, it's getting a little bit out of hand. Okay, so this side up slide, I apologize, a little unclear because it's come off the Treasury web's website, I had to kind of do a copy and paste. But that's, you can see, um, there's the 2 trillion where it's going into, and there's your 1.21 trillion, which is being spent on social services. Education, fundamental, uh, in my opinion. Um, so, but I'm hoping to see them spend more, well, there's more basic education rather than tertiary because that obviously affects a hang of a lot more in the population and there's a lot more education needed, needed there. Um, your health, critical, um, then there's your community services and here are all your grants, social, social grants, um, old age, child grants, etc. Quite a substantial figure there. Um, and then your normal peace and security, and then general public services and the other two there. I always find it quite interesting is what is our money actually being spent, spent um, on? Um, then where's the money coming from? So this is where we get involved. Um, so taxes are gonna account for that. Borrowings, and then that's uh, kind of non-tax revenue. I'm not exactly sure what, what that particular percentage is, but that's where the money comes in that we need to spend in terms of the budget. Here's another, you can see a little bit clearer in that graph where the, where the spending is going. Okay. So how are you affected? Okay, so to support economic rec recovery, the government has said, okay, we won't, we won't harass you more for taxes this year. Um, so there's no additional tax revenues, no new taxes that are being created in this budget. There's a 4% inflationary increase in the personal tax brackets. Okay, so inflation is sitting between three and four at the moment. 
It ch does change every month, the CPI index. Um, going with four, it just needs a little bit more money in your pocket. A lot of people are not getting increases in that, so they're just going to have a little bit more leeway to, to get by every month, which is great. It's, they want to increase customer spending, so generally most people spend what they earn, um, and they want people to be doing that, so getting, getting their money another way. Bad news for you, however, if you're into uh, too much alcohol and uh, tobacco, you're getting slapped with some more sim tax, and that's you know always expected. They have to make up a deficit of all the all the corruption and all the loss there. Um, and then what will directly affect us, obviously, is fuel. So fuels going up um, thirty seven cents if I look at that inflationary increase of 15 cents um, so this is every time you buy a tank of petrol sorry I should have put the, the number in here every time you buy a tank of petrol you're paying a whole lot of levies to the government for the privilege of buying petrol um, and included in that is the RAF levy, levy for the road accident fund um, but there's also just general um, you know for fuel and um, just so the government can tax fuel um, like your sin taxes on alcohol and tobacco, which does spread the tax, um, you know, collections out a bit. But uh, the impact on this comes through in our food, in almost every single thing that we buy, because as we know in this country, we are very reliant on uh, road transport to um, to get our goods and services everywhere. So that's that'll come through in our, in our food bills. So a little bit of relief in the personal tax, but a little bit's been taken away in the, in the actual spending and where people don't um, always notice it. Okay, the other way they're, um, they're getting a bit more money in is in terms of UAF. So this is a good thing in a way, if you, if you are a, uh, you know, retrenched or contract ended or whatever. So you're going to be getting a little bit more out up to 17,000 Rand, but it's increased from about, I think it's 12 or 13 up to 17. So what they're doing here is they're bringing more money into the UIF fund. So there was a cap and you only paid a certain amount at that cap, depending, didn't matter how, how much your salary was after that. Um, and now they're just increasing the, the base there to, so they can get more money out of, out of people, out of the employers and the employees in order to bring more money into the UIF there. Um, hoping that that is one of the departments that's going to receive a little bit of uh, restructuring and, because I think it's quite, quite needed in terms of spending there. Um, then revenues uh, expected to be 10% lower than the previous year. Um, for obvious reasons, um, but higher than their previous expectations. And as I've already said, they're not going to introduce any more tax measures um, or to, to increase taxes, and that's going to be about 40 billion that they've been prepared to let go of um, in order to stimulate the economy. Okay, so this is also quite interesting. Revenue collection, where do they get revenue from? So personal income taxes there. Um, so this is looking at where it was in 2015-16, we're sitting at 34% of tax coming in was coming from personal taxes. 2019-2020 um, is almost 40% there comes from personal taxes. So a couple of years ago, so this is that's personal tax, that company income tax, and then other. So your others, your sin taxes, your fuel levies, you know, all those other customs, all those things. So really, personal income tax, VAT, and company taxes are the main three. Those figures are quite telling in terms of what's happened with the economy. Now, we know before COVID, there was problems in the economy. Um, so these used to be almost equal. It used to be a third, a third, a third. So the effect on this is that because companies have you know, we all know lots of companies are struggling, doing a lot less revenue, there's a lot more losses. This number is decreasing. Less revenue, the VAT number is decreasing, and there's less consumer spending. So this is so they're kind of honing in on this. We've even seen it. Um, you know, you obviously there's still VAT audits and all of that, but in terms of company taxes for small companies, 
there's a lot less company audits going on. But yeah, in your personal taxes, they, there's been a lot of AI development and they are nailing people more and more and more. Um, at the budget speech last year, um, Edward Kitzwinger was a panel guest and he was saying they, ran a, they just ran a check between people with two properties and people that were declaring their rental income on their tax returns for their second property. And, you know, because, you know, they could see if it was a holiday house or not um, based on location and that. And they managed to collect just in a month an additional 500,000 rand of, was it 500? 500 million, sorry. 500,000 rand wouldn't go very far. 500 million of tax revenue just from that little exercise, first step on it. So they're getting more clever, which is a good thing. Hopefully the people that are, you know, quite compliant and all of that are not harassed as much. Um, they've spent three billion is being spent on technology and infrastructure. That's your AI, you're looking at different systems, you're running, that, like I've said, running it against other information out there. It's your uh, new department that is focusing on higher income um, individuals. Um, your company, there's a department that just deals with, with companies, higher income companies. Um, so that's, they really are making sure that they, they investigate more. And the focus on widening the tax base. So I'll come back to that and show you how many people are actually registered and how many are paying. Um, there's a lot of people out there we all know that are not paying tax, that, that should be paying tax. Um, so I'd love to see how that works in the taxi industry. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully they can get that right. And you can't hide any more from size. There's just too, too much information out there. There's 87 countries, we've spoken about it before, that signed this accord that they're going to share information. So there's also a lot of you know, people that are moving around between company countries, they're moving their wealth around the world. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of little trackers on, on people and alerts being um, put, put uh, sent back. And, you know, as, as I said, this information is all shared. So they're going to be on to people that think they can hide. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not an option anymore. It's best, as you've always said, best just to stay compliant, keep your nose clean. Okay. Um, so this is just a quick, quick look at this. These are the possible taxpayers that are registered. So we've got a population of 60 million, 22 million individuals are registered for tax in this country. Okay. Um, this is the growth rate of registrations. We know now, I don't know if you know, but um, everyone kind of needs, you know, that's working needs a tax registration number. And um, payroll people will know about that. That's the people that are actually, um, so in terms of submitting tax returns. Okay. So 7 million, you know, obviously under the, um, yeah. Quite a, most, mostly under the threshold. This is in um, this is in thousands. Um, so it has your your millions. But this is just a good uh, good slide to show as well. They always talk. I didn't see too much of it this year, but often around budget time, there's all these lobbies and all these fear mongering people that are saying, oh, you know, wealth tax and all that kind of thing. Increasing the taxes of these brackets here and doing wealth tax, it's not going to have that much effect. You see how many people are in these brackets? Hardly anyone. Okay. So either there's hardly anyone or there's a lot of people that are in those brackets that aren't declaring anything. But um, it, uh, yeah, the wealth tax, you know, I know they have, they've done it before, probably for political reasons, but um, it's not going to have much effect in terms of bringing in more revenue in the budget. Okay. So those are the, the tax tables. Um, oops, for interest sake, we have to always show those. Um, so you can see the base rate has gone a bit, gone up there. Um, and then those are the rebates and, and the, yeah, the rebates. So if you're earning a little bit more that you can earn tax-free. Okay. 
The medical aid credits, I don't have them on the slide, the medical aid credits have also been increased, um, which is a good thing they didn't increase it one of the years. And um, it also shows that, you know, the NHI kind of plans are, you know, being put aside so they are giving the compensation back, um, a little bit more back to, to the people for their medical aid um, contributions, okay? So a little, few little concerns. Um, there's not too many in this budget. The one thing that they were looking at is because everyone's working from home, they are gonna be looking at home office allowances. So it is fast as kind of saying to clients last year, you know, have a look at this, you know, you're working from home, make sure you, you know, all, you know what can you do? What can you claim? They've seen, oh gosh, you know, this is gonna affect our tax revenue. So they are gonna be quite strict in home office allowances in the coming, um, tax season um, and demanding a lot more proof of, of expenditure there. And it's actually coming under review. So they may in future take home office allowances away. There was, that was alluded to. The other thing in terms of tax on retirement savings, so this is a big one. If you have your retirement savings in South Africa and you want to financially immigrate, you're, you've obviously, especially with RAs, you've taken, um, actually with all of them, you've taken that tax deduction every year against your, um, your income tax payable um, for your contributions. So they don't want you to now be paying tax on that when you're getting your RA payout in another country and another country is going to benefit and South Africa has taken all the deductions of that. So when you... When you immigrate, when you are now taxable in another country, um, or if you are now living in another country, they're going to look at your tax residency quite carefully. And if you're receiving RA payouts, they are going to be taxing those in South Africa. Okay, I'm not going to go into the detail of that, but if you know anyone, or if you know any clients around that, you want to actually, um, that want to immigrate, they're looking at moving, it's, it's something that needs to be looked at and it needs to be managed managed carefully because um, it is quite a big change um, there and it could be quite costly um, for, for anyone moving in countries. Um, Section 18A deductions as well as getting going to be uh, heavily audited. Um, this is yeah, always unfortunate for the people that are always that are compliant, um, but there's a hang of a lot of fraud going on in Section 18A deductions. Um, we know of kind of um, schools, some certain associations and stuff that aren't actually Section 18A registered. It's quite a rigmarole to get registered and compliant there, and you need to send your, your things in, and they've got they've got under the radar with some of these things and it's there's a huge focus going to be on that um and any deductions that are coming through for that in terms of tax returns um so before you contribute to section 18a 18a um companies you want to make sure one that they're registered and you get a proper certificate for it numbered and all of that but you actually also want to make sure that their registration is it's, it's dinkum it's you know it's it's valid um, and they are up to date with their taxes, tax payment certificate, all of that. Otherwise, you're not going to be allowed that deduction. That's basically what they're saying. Okay. Also, focus on high wealth earners. Um, so, yeah, um, yes, there's less of them, but you know, if they can extract money out of them, why not? Um, the same with that is it'll be your bigger companies as well. The, the big company tax, uh, big company department at SARS is getting a lot more infrastructure in it, and um, they're going to be making sure they get every cent out of the people that they need to. Um, this is for companies. This is also a little. It's an interesting one. It's uh, you know, SARS is like, okay, cool. Next year we're going to look at decreasing the um, rate of corporate tax to twenty seven percent, and we all go, that's great. Um, but there are some caveats that they're saying. They're saying, no, we're going to restrict assessed losses. And they're talk, talking about you're only allowed to use a third of your assessed loss in the, in the following years of profit. 
which okay we all think is quite unfair so hopefully there's going to be quite a lot of lobbying against that um it's it's not it's not so cool even though you're getting a, a deduction why they why they're trying to reduce the corporate tax rate is to make south africa more investable um to make it more attractive to people to to invest here um our corporate tax rate is a little high compared to other countries in Africa um, and, and globally. Um, and I mean, this one's been on a card for years and it is still something looked at, it's connected persons. So if you've got loans from loans from a director or loans from related, we call them related parties, they're gonna be looking at the interest deductions um, in terms of those and restricting that to 30% of earnings. The other, the learnership allowance. So we've also been quite big with clients and I'm sure you've seen it is people give bursaries to their staff. Um, that is falling away. Um, there's a bit of debate on to what the exact wording is for that, but basically people used to give bursaries to staff to study or staff's children and that was taken as like a salary sacrifice and they didn't get taxed on that amount. Now they're saying, no, you can't do that anymore unless it's like a public bursary that you offer to the general public. So yeah, we'll see technically what that means, but that's, you know, if you're using that to incentivize staff, it's coming to an end. Um, the urban development zones are also coming to an end, which is a big thing because companies have made plans. They go and invest in Atlantis, for example, um, because they get these quite generous deductions and now they're not going to be giving them anymore. And the, the other one that's not on here is a section 12J um, allowances. Well, a lot, so section 12J was his investment and I'm sure um, some of you would have, you know, in, in the professionals, have got a lot of people that want to just give you Give your client tell you to give your clients all these section 12 day investments. I've never really liked them, but that's coming to an end in June. So you used to, used to be able to contribute quite a significant amount of money to these investment schemes and get the whole amount that you contributed as, as a deduction against tax. And you'd still get interest and growth in the investment when the investment matured. Um, that's coming to an end in June, um, which is also, as I say, yeah, you know, not so cool for people that are doing long-term planning um, in terms of companies there. Um, is that the end? Yes, and that is the end of the slideshow. So, are we back? Okay. Cool, that is everything from my side. So now I'm gonna open it off. Um, I didn't obviously finish my slides off properly there. I'm gonna open up the floor um, to anyone that has any questions on the budget. Um, any comments, questions, or things that you'd like to know that struck you or want to know further on that? Yeah, Nick speaking. Hi. Uh, in, so there's no change on transfer duties, rebates in respect of estate duty, uh, and the like. Nothing is that all still the same? Um, I haven't seen anything. Um, I have to go into. I wasn't going to go into that that specifically. Um, yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that one. But it, it looks like there's not much not much change in those. There's certainly no no increase in 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 those. And uh, the section 42 swap for assets, shares for assets, nothing changed there. I think that's getting a, getting more focus um, on those because they're looking at a lot of those things in terms of tax loopholes. Um, okay, but nothing's changed at this stage. No, nothing, nothing for that. Yeah. Okay. There isn't, I mean, there wasn't a lot of like big changes. So um, yeah, which is quite nice. Um, yeah. Thanks. Cool. Anyone else? Oh. Cindy. Yes, I don't know what's happened to my uh, 
his face there, but it's okay, fine. Um, <laughs> has he? <laughs> <laughs> I promise it doesn't look like that in real life. Uh, <laughs> what has happened is VAT staying the same. Yeah. 15%. And yeah. them trying to spread the tax base, have they thought about increasing that and in extra fuel levies rather than leaving the income tax alone? So there was a lot of proposals to and you know thoughts about looking at um increasing vat um it is a you know our vat is still you know we say 15 percent is quite high but it's actually low compared to the rest of the world um but i think the one thing is that remember this year is an election year so probably putting that up would not, it might have been a proposal and discussed behind the closed doors and probably got quite a bit of pushback because it is, it is a great idea and it is a much, you know, I think it's much better because it does, as you say, bring a lot more people into contributing. But yeah, it's that, I mean, the last time they increased that there was lots of economic pushback from other political parties and yeah, I think it's not, wouldn't be done in an election year. Makes sense, but that's how they get money from taxi owners who don't yeah. pay tax any other way. Abs absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, <laughs> I try not to comment on all the politics of this. <laughs> Anything from your side, Jacques? No, not much. Uh, just no. There's no no increases in, in RA or changes in the RA contributions and uh, tax free savers. No. Which is sad. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah. No, just listening. I would, you know, I really would have also expected the tax free savings thing to increase. I mean, I didn't mention it, but you know, South Africa has got a wealth problem, and the problem is we do not have enough wealth. We do not have enough people in this country with money that are investing because the people with money invest, people with money create employment, people with money are the ones that go into entrepreneurship and, you know, little project one farms and, you know, those kind of things, which just stimulate the economy even more. Um, that's going out the country at the moment quite a lot. So with these kind of saving schemes like the tax and free investment account, um, if you are encouraging people to save, it's a good thing. Um, so, I, you know, I would also have wondered why that wasn't more incentivized, but... Um, yeah, on Section 13 as well, no changes on Section 13. Uh, yeah, didn't see any. Mm -hmm. there. So, yeah, they need to get people to invest more in infrastructure, buildings, houses. Yeah, so... Companies. Yes, um, I think that just the one thing there was the... Um, that section 13 quad urban development zone that is being mm. that is being changed there that's what i mentioned there with the um the urban development zones um mm. that's coming to an end so that's not helping you know that kind of investment in in um other areas in kind of your what are they called development zone areas yeah Yeah, I did. there is a lot of there is a lot of good. There is a lot of positive, but um, again, we'll have to see whether the the disciplined action of the spending um, actually you know um, comes to fruition. Cool, Steve. Anything from your side or Lydia? No, negative. I just, one thing I just noticed, I think when they did the, um, I remember, remember the tax tables being 5%. I see you got it at 4%. So maybe they were just a bit incorrect. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. But they said in the budget speech is 5%. Yeah, I, I, the, I remember, remember the five and I see you got it at four, but not much of a difference, but that's the only thing I picked up. Yeah, from both the, the, the documents I was reading, I figured four, but you know, doesn't, you know, at least we're getting a little bit of relief. They, they, did, a, they did an upsell. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, round it up. You know, politicians do these things. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and Lydia? I'm good. Thank you, Claire. Cool. If you do have any further questions, um, you know where to contact us, claire at recro.ca.za or admin at recro.ca.za and one of the team will, will get back to you with, with anything. But I hope that um, helped you just understand a bit more background to find if you know, you know what the economics side is, you know, going into this and um, it's a lot more than just, you know, pulling a whole lot of numbers together, a lot of factors going into it, it does help. Look at the spending and then, you know, importantly for us and, you know, for business owners as well, looking at, you know, tax risk, um, where else are going to be on to you? So, um, which is always a, an important thing. Cool. So there's no further questions. I'm going to say thank you very much for um, joining us today. And oh, well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for putting it together. Absolute pleasure. Cool. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Claire. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. bye.